Uh, and what we're covering today is my favorite part of the REST API. We are talking about extending the default routes and creating your own endpoints. I'm a PHP developer. I love the sort of tweaky backend stuff. There's gonna be some parts in my slides like this. We're gonna go, man, you're not a designer. Uh, anything that I've ever done that looks good is not my fault. It's because I worked with somebody uh, who, who has those skills. I like making database stuff. I like making APIs. I've rolled way too many custom a Ajax APIs in WordPress, and I look forward to never doing that again. Doing it with the REST API instead of building your own thing, building out on top of admin Ajax, it's, uh, it's a necessary evil that is going away. So what we're talking about today is the new WordPress way of handling these situations. Um, it is extending the default responses to uh, add that one thing that you're missing to combine a couple post requests into one. And we're gonna be talking about creating your own endpoints. So when you need a totally custom API. I do wanna point out that uh, I know that a lot of people might be new to the REST API, and this is totally skipping to the back of the book. Uh, I also, I wrote that book and it's a free uh, download thanks to the good people at WP Engine and Torque. So this is one of the la last couple chapters in that. If you're new to the REST API, it's an exciting new thing. This is a great resource. There are a lot of great talks on WordPress TV on getting started with it. And uh, I'm gonna be talking about extending it. So if you're like, but Josh, I, I don't know much about it. That, that's a great resource. There's a lot of other great resources out there. Let's talk about defaults for a second. WordPress, in the traditional sense, has this great templating engine. We have a custom post type and it just magically shows us an archive of that, it magically shows us our single uh, post view for that custom post type. It has that infrastructure built in and that handles a lot of the situations. But we have all of that infrastructure. We have WP Query, which is used to build that post collection. W, uh, the rewrites API, which is used to build that URL. So when we have our client saying to us, I need this thing and that's not a thing that exists, we have that infrastructure that WordPress provides us to customize the template hierarchy, to change the WP query, to make our own WP queries, et cetera. So that's what we're talking about today is that the REST API provides us default routes, all my posts, post 12, but it also provides us infrastructure to make our own custom APIs and to customize the API that exists by default. So the first part of this is extending the defaults. This is a metaphor here. Um, we do this all the time. Add filter, the content. Add something on to the end of our single post view, right? Um, template include. Uh, swap out a different template in our theme. So why would we extend the existing default? Um, it's missing something. That's it. It's very close. Uh, but we wish it had one piece of data. And when we say extending the, the defaults, we're talking about both read and write. So by default, you can update a, a post at slash post and a meta field at slash meta. When you're gonna say, but Josh, I wanna update this one meta field when I update my posts. Well, I'm gonna show you how we can extend a default route so that way certain meta fields are, you can update in the same request. Uh, why make your own endpoints? Because the existing don't work for you. My metaphors at the bottom here is we do all the time as WordPress developers, we do a custom WP query. Uh, we have a class that does our query for us that already exists. We inject some arguments into it and it gives us a collection of something. Uh, we do global WPDB and we query the database directly into our custom tables or some other situation where that makes sense. We add rewrite rules all the time, right? We need to have some situation where there is no WordPress default that makes sense. We have the infrastructure for that. So in the REST API, same things apply. Uh, you're building an app, a site that has a custom collection of data, uses a weird WP query across four post types and three, uh, you know, three different taxonomies. Uh, we already have our class, we've already built out our CRUD, we wanna wrap it up in a RESTful API. Um, just get the data we need. 
And the other thing is to replace admin AJAX. Admin AJAX is super inefficient, and it was really never meant to be used in the front end the way that we do it. It was built for core uh, admin screens. And so uh, this is a better WordPress way of doing front end ad AJAX. I want to talk about the way that the REST API works workflow. I'm going to get back to this same slide when I get to default uh, creating your own routes. But this is a real quick explanation, is that we have WP REST server. It routes your response, figures out where, how to create a request and where to put it in response. Now, you notice in some cases it goes right to response because it's going to give you an error. There's no matching route. It goes to WP REST request. That sanitizes and validates and checks the permissions for your request. So that could go to response directly with an error. Sorry, you're not allowed, or sorry, you're missing a required field. Um, and then it goes somewhere. It goes to the class that handles post requests, it handles your custom class, and then you create a WP REST response to have a perfectly formed uh, RESTful JSON response. So, uh, extending defaults. We're customizing our defaults, as I said, to add fields to the response. And when I say fields, I want to be clear that my examples use custom fields. Get post meta, update post meta. But you're going to see it can be any data that's queryable with a function. Uh, so it's an excellent use for meta fields, but it could be anything. And it's going to apply to all read or write endpoints of a route. Routes versus endpoints is a little bit of a tricky one because you can have multiple URLs, one URL with multiple endpoints in the sense of this URL, if you make a GET request, that's one endpoint. In this, but you make a POST request to update a POST, that's a different endpoint. So in the example of using a POST endpoint, uh, using the POST update or the user update, it's the same route slash users but you make a GET request, you're going to one endpoint. Uh, and you make a POST request, you're going to another endpoint. Because it does two different things. So let's talk about register API field. Register API field is a helper function. It handles adding new fields to a response. And it, it, you could reverse engineer it, but this is the standard way. And like many things in WordPress, we stick to a standard, so therefore we have future compatibility. If they change the internals, they'll update this function or deprecate it to make a replacement. So we want to use this way to add new responses, uh, new data to the responses. Um, it has three arguments. The first is what object. Object could be a post type. We could say post type, so post page, your custom post type, product, whatever it is you have. And then it could say also terms, meta, or user. Uh, comments, the things that you have in WordPress that the REST API allows you to modify. You give the field a name. And then you pass an array of arguments. I'm going to show you an example of this. For read callback, this is the function that gets the data from the database. Write callback, this is the function that writes the data to the database, and a schema callback. Uh, in the interest of time, we're not going to talk about schemas today. Schemas are, one of the principles of REST is that it should be discoverable by a client. And so schemas define what's going on at these fields, where it is, what type of data, so on and so forth. Um, this is the documentation. V2.wpapi.org is an ongoing process to document the WordPress REST API. Needs your help, but this extending modifying documentation uh, is very good, and most of these examples are modified from there. Uh, so GPL also I wrote it. So um, the uh, first example. These are examples of handlers. In this example, we are getting a post meta when we are reading, and we are updating the post meta when we are reading. But we do need to format it. It would be, we might be tempted, and I was the first time I tried this and failed, to use. Uh, can I take a quick PM real quick? Sure. 
Somebody parked underneath a covered parking space. If you have a gray Honda Civic, it looks like, or if you are parked in any under awning space, please move your car. It will be towed in the next 25 minutes if you don't move your Do car. Do we have a winner? Yeah. <laughs> Is that you? <laughs> he gets a car. <laughs> yeah, you win a car. All right, thank you. You can tell people that I gave away a car because he would have lost his car. <laughs> See, this is the best talk you've ever been to. So, slightly less exciting than getting a car is, um, <laughs> the hand works for read callbacks. The first time I did this, I said, read callback, get post meta. The thing is, is it's not, it's not passing the arguments correctly for get post meta. So I made this helper function that passes the ID of the post and the field name, and then returns that from get post meta. Uh, same thing with update. You see, I mean, it goes down to update post meta. Nothing new. But we just have a little bit of formatting to put value in the right place over here, field name over here, and to get the ID from this object. So to put that all together, this is an example where we are registering a cut, an extra field on a default route. Which one? Post. So this is going to happen on any post. Uh, this is modified actually from my Yoast SEO uh, add-on for the REST API, which is, there's a link to it in my post uh, that has the slides. It exposes the title and description fields for reading and writing, so you could get it all in one place. It could be very helpful if you were building a reader type app, that you'd have that data with your post. It's also a great example that you should look at if you're looking to do this. Um, so this is the whole thing. Uh, register API field. You'll notice that we hooked to REST API init. REST API init is your equivalent to init. Um, when the REST API has initialized, it does action REST API init. So we could do this at init, but then that's a waste of resources on other requests. So we say on posts, we are adding a field called Starship, because I'm a nerd. And um, our get callback, we just looked at that in the last slide. These can be null. If you don't want to have uh, the ability to add the ability to write, just pass null for update callback. Uh, and then your schema, uh, in the interest of time, we're not going to talk about this totally different subject. So that's how it works together. That, by the way, that's how you modify your default routes. When you say, oh, I'm mad because they didn't design it this way so it would go here for my, my needs this one time, that's the process to make it work for you. And this is an introduction. I have some example code on my, in my slides that you can read. It's a fully more working plugin. Let's talk about adding endpoints. This is my favorite thing, by the way. I love doing this, is making my own APIs because I've written custom a a APIs for doing admin replacements for admin AJAX. And I like it because I have gotten out of this process of we make a, you know, hit to admin AJAX, add action, do add WP AJAX, whatever. Then we check the nonce. We check that the nonce is valid. We check that all of our fields are set. Then we validate them. Then we sanitize them. And let me just throw a stone from inside of a glass house and say that's ridiculous. We should all feel bad about that, myself included. But then we get smart and we write like a, we write a system to handle this. So we don't have to keep doing that same stupid thing over and again. But now every one of us has our own system. When we use custom endpoints, we are doing it the WordPress way. You're doing it in a way that it's self-documenting. We are doing it in a way that as we all learn this, as WordPress people, will become very obvious to us when we pick up somebody else's code, somebody else's plugin. We inherit a site that's got a bunch of custom API work done. It sh once we start to learn this stuff, it'll be very obvious to you and to you what I have done. You're not figuring out the Josh way, you're using it the WordPress way. Yes, I like my way, but I like the WordPress way better. Also, the reason we use WordPress is because there are people who are better at us at making CMSs. There are people that are much better than me at making APIs. This code in this API is going to be the part of WordPress that we can be the most proud of. 
When people say, oh, WordPress code, it's a mess. Yeah, part of core is a mess. It was written 10 years ago or eight years ago. When the WordPress REST API gets into core, we're gonna tell those people, look at the REST API. This is the newest and best part of WordPress, and it's really well done. And it enforces a pattern when we follow it that separates concerns. And I'm gonna start showing you this. It's very nice stuff. We talked about this before, the same diagram. I wanna go into more detail because we are making our own routes. What are we making? This. Remember it was a question mark before? Because we are talking about default routes. It figured out they're asking for posts, they're asking for users, and the REST API provides that callback. We're doing this. So what happens? The REST API figures out, it's a rewrite role, WP JSON. oh, we're on the API and it figures out whether or not it has a matching route. If not, error is a type of response. It then creates an a, a object of the WP REST request class. We're gonna see this in a minute, but when you are processing a, a, call, a request to the REST API, you're never gonna go into get super variable. You're never gonna go into post it's gonna be handled for you by this class. And in the way that it's handled, it's going to handle, did I hit all my requireds? If I'm missing fields that aren't required but have defaults, it's gonna fill in the default there. And it's going to allow you for every single field to have a validation and sanitization callback. Because this is our responsibility as developers is to make sure that data that is coming into our system is correctly formatted, right? We don't have an array or we have a string, in that it's safe, it's safe that we have either nothing or a string where, when somebody sends us a MySQL injection attack, right? We're expecting a number for user ID. Well, that's a, if we don't do that right, somebody could dump our user database. But when we sanitize it, when they try and do that to us, we end up with a zero. Great, so now we can't send them a response, but we can't be uh, a security problem. So the REST API gives us a way to define all these things and separate it out into different parts. To get into more detail on this, um, once we find a matching route, it checks permissions. Every route has a permissions callback. We'll look at this. Whether it can, we can define this. Generally we say, can't re current user can, or we can just return true, right, if it's a read access. It validates every single field if we have a validation callback set. And it's going to immediately dump to response if one of those fails. This field isn't valid. This field which was required is not set. And it's gonna do it, and I don't know the standard for how a REST API should give these types of errors the REST API in WordPress provides that infrastructure for me. So it gives me exactly the correct response when it's invalid. And if that changes or that's wrong, that's on the REST API team. We validated our fields, sanitize our fields. So you can use a custom sanitization or you can call any function that exists. So absent if it's a number field. Very similar stuff, but we're doing it in different pieces. We're not saying, going into the get super variable, getting this field, checking if it's set, check, running it through absent, see if it's bigger than zero, we are letting it happen together. Then it goes to the callback. That's where you do stuff with your data. Um, I'm gonna get into this in a bit, but it's gonna be the shortest part of the talk because you all know what to do with data. Uh, and this is custom API. It's, it's uh, you're gonna do your thing and then you're gonna create a response. This should be a object of the WP REST uh, response class, which is a class of the REST API that handles your headers and such, or it can be a WP error, which we're all used to generate. Uh, the REST API will format a WP error correctly for us. How do we create routes? With register REST route. It's a helper function. Uh, very nice to use, and it is hooked, again, to REST API in it. it happens when the REST API builds up. Um, this is the docs for this. I'm doing a very simplified version of this because with, we're gonna show one, one route, one callback. Uh, this right here has more detail on it and also 
a example class that follows the pattern exactly the way that core does it, uh, the core REST API does. So I'm going to go through this one part at a time. Is we start with, we define our, UR, our namespace, our URL, our method, and our callback. That is the minimum. We can, I'm going to show you some more stuff. Go through this part by part. Let's talk about namespacing and versioning, though. You see in here, it was my plugin slash v1. Namespace and version. When we do PHP development in WordPress, we're highly encouraged to come up with a custom slug before our functions, right? So that way, if I have a function that's called get menu, you have a function called get menu, you have a function called get menu, and all three of our plugins are installed, well, we have a fatal error. But when mine's Josh get menu, I'm not going to conflict with you. So, well, I was here first. <laughs> um, in, in the, here, here's, here's something that could be real bad, is I write a plugin to add a menu route, right? And, in fact, I've done this. Uh, and then one of you has, goes to my talk and goes, oh man, I know how to do a custom route. And there's no, there's no way to get menus via the REST API right now, but I can make a custom route. And so yours is w, wpjson slash menu, and mine's wpjson slash menu. Well, whichever one of us adds the latest is going to win. Well, that sucks, because that's going to break sites, because what if your site's dependent on mine? When we namespace, we can have 27 endpoints called menu, as long as they're all namespaced by vendor. Also, it's just good practice. It's also good practice to stick a version, even if it's v1, because it lets you signal to clients that there's two different versions when you get to v2. Because, right, we're all imperfect and we all have to get to version two. So, what does register rest uh, route define? The endpoint for routes. So we give it a URL, that's the route, and then what endpoints are on it? Do we have something for on a get request, on a post request? on a delete request, on a put request, what different endpoints are available to us there. Um, permissions for each endpoint. Maybe that returns true and it's public, right? The get request is always public, maybe not. Definitely a post request should have some sort of permissions check. Just like if we were building, you know, we're building out the edit screen for our plugin, we want to check if the user can update manage options. Um, transport methods. Is this endpoint a get? Is it a post? Is it anything? Fields for the endpoint. What's required? What's the sanitization? What's the validation? Callback. If everything's good on a request to this endpoint, what do we do with it? What's our function to process this? Uh, and then schema. Define the, po the routes for that. Um, so let's go through this part by part. Most of this example, is pulled from a plugin I made called um, Search WP API. Uh, search WP is a really awesome WordPress plugin for search. And they actually have, beyond being awesome, they have a really cool way of doing uh, WP query uh, with indexed uh, results. So I made an add-on because it solves some problems with uh, general queries. Uh, but it's a good example, and it has one endpoint. You can download it on, on GitHub or WordPress.org, there's a link in my post. So, what are we doing here? The namespace, search WP API. We've abbreviated it, so that way, because my URL is search. Well, that would be really a jerk move of me if I tried to capitalize search. So we put it in context. This is a search of SWP API, okay? And then, so namespace route, and then for now, nothing for our arguments. Let's build on that. Transport method. We could write get here. There are some helper functions in, by the way, this is all in object context in my code, because that's where it's coming from. Just keep that in mind if you're kind of pasting. Uh, if you don't do it in object context, that's going to be an issue. Um, the, I'm using these uh, constants that exist in the WP REST server class. They're helpful because there are ones for multiple different types of transport methods but that just returns get. So I'm saying you can only make a get request to this. If you try and post to this, it's gonna throw an error. Permissions callback. 
what function is going to be run that has to return true in order for this to be allowed. Um, so it's in, in that class. Uh, and then this is the, that example. Uh, in this case, this is my, what actually went in the plugin, is I have a filter there that returns true by default. Because it's a search, I want people to be able to search, but my end user should be able to define whether or not they want this to be public or require authentication. Uh, this is a very generic one here. Current user can something. Edit post, read post, delete post, whatever that is. Standard WordPress permissions authentication. I feel like one of the biggest misunderstandings about the WordPress REST API is authentication. How does that work? What's the system? It's the same system y'all already know. We have a cookie that tracks the user that's created when they log in, and every user has a role, and every role has capabilities. The REST API gives us some interesting new ways to log in a user, but it uses the same cookie system. It uses the same uh, global for the current user uh, to track who the current user is. Fields. Um, in general, because this can get really big, I like to use a callback function for this. So I'm just going to return the args and we'll look at this. This is a simplified version of what that returns, but it, I chose, right, so it would go down here in my actual example. But I chose some very uh, unique, it, important things. The first field here is S, right, because it's WordPress search. If you're doing a keyword search, by default, we should use S. What's my default? Just an empty string. Sanitize callback. Sanitize text field is defined by core. I don't need to make a function to sanitize a text field. So I can just use that. This is just like adding a hook, right? You say add action something and then a callback or array and then an object and a callback. And then somewhere in WordPress core, it does call user function to get to that. Same system. Um, this is one of the arguments here. In this case, search WP has a, um, has, a, has alternate search engines that you can define. So I made that an optional. Uh, but if nobody does it, let's use default. And then I used a validation callback because I don't want somebody making a request to, a to use a search engine that doesn't exist. So this was an example where I got all the, the, all the possible good choices into an array and checked is the, is the current value in that array. That returns true, we're good. Returns false, we send them an error. This field is wrong. Page, default one, right? Fine, sanitize callback, adds in. We make sure that we have a number. So you're gonna do this for every one of your routes, every one of your endpoints, uh, the core API has great systems for making this work into your schema. Uh, that doc link that I showed you shows how it works, doing it the WordPress way. Uh, and I recommend reading that code. And so what have we done so far? Methods, so this is a get request. Permissions, call that function. It must return true. What fields do we have? We just looked at that. And then callback. That's where we do something with the data. Here is a very generic callback. When I said before, this is where the magic happens. This is request that's passed all of these. Request is an object of the WP REST request class. It has all of your information that it, you've defined in those fields set into a property called params. So if you're making a get request and you said these are my five fields I want you to validate and sanitize, they're in a property called params. It's private, so we use a getter to get it, get params. This object here, this array here now, params, now has, if it's a get request, my everything that was sent in that request after it's been cleaned up by the REST API. So in the example where I said page, default one, sanitize callback absent, 
if you make a get request there and in page you, you write the string hamburger, param, get params is going to return one. If you leave it empty, get params is going to return one. If you, retur if you send three, it's going to return three. So even though the get super variable is still hamburger, or, you know, negative five, this get params method is going to have the correct value for us. This is the most pseudocode in the entire example, is these two lines. We're going to do something with it. Whatever that is for you, um, if you've already written the function, the class, that gets you the data that this is for, format params, stick it in there, and then get your response. Maybe you're doing a custom WP query, you're doing a custom database table for your app, for your site. Whatever that is, that's up to you. This is your own custom endpoint. So this is sort of like, I tr I'm trusting you on these two lines. The point is, is that we want to use rest ensure response to create our response. You'll notice we're never JSON encoding anything. Let core handle that. We're not setting headers. Exactly, let core header, uh, handle that. Uh, and I'll talk about rest ensure response in the future, but in this example, we say, if it's an array, good. Rest ensure response, results, and then the second argument is a status code, 200. Standard HTTP status code for success. If it's a WP error, let's presume that our class can return a WP error. Just return it instead of 500. That 500 is not even, even necessary because it can detect it's a, re it's a WP error. It'll set a 500. And then we say else, we create sort of a generic, I don't know, hopefully we never get to that. Hopefully we've done good P uh, design uh, in our cred. So our response should be an instance of the WP REST response class, or it should be a WP error, which will become a formatted, properly formatted error. In this rest ensure response function is our helper function for doing that. It takes three arguments. It takes some amount of data, a string, an object, an array. It'll become JSON for you. It takes a status code, default 200. If you want to make a 404, make a 404. Make a you know, 300, whatever it is that is your standard HTTP transport uh, code. Headers, uh, optional, but if you want to pass an array of strings there that'll become headers in your response, that's how you do it. Um, that's about it for me today, uh, but you're just getting started. This is going to be an important part of your uh, tool set as a WordPress developer, somebody making a site, is not just knowing how the REST API works, but knowing how to make it work for your client. This is just going to be a thing that your clients have, that your sites have, but this is going to be the way that you customize it, that you as a WordPress developer say, ah yes, you have a problem, I can solve it with this tool. So. Uh, as I said, the slides from my talk are there, and there's the helpful links uh, section, including these two plugins that I really want you to take a look at if you're interested in this. I learned by reading code, and there's one that shows you how to modify responses, that's the SEO uh, integration, and then there's one that's a total custom uh, result. Uh, also, WP Engine and Torque Magazine, as I said, they're nice enough to create this uh, free ebook that's it starts with what is the WordPress REST API, how to work with posts, and it goes the whole way to this point, and a little bit about the future. Um, I have some cards if anybody's looking for the link for that. Um, Y'all are awesome, and I really appreciate you being here and uh, coming out to hear me talk and learn about this. Seriously, thank you. It means a ton to me. For questions, of which I know there are many, I'm sure. So, Can you all that? <laughs> <laughs> whatever questions, let's go. I mean, I go. Um, the question is, what does he think is going to be the impact of PHP 7 on the REST API? Sort of nothing, because the unit tests just like core pass in, in there. Um, it'll make it faster. That's good. That's a generic answer on WordPress is that as long as there are a couple non-breaking changes in PHP 5 to P PHP 7 to PHP 5, but in general, it's just going to make things faster. 
And hopefully once we start developing for PHP 7, we'll be able to do some really smart things like type hinting that'll make our code more readable and our code execute faster. Other questions? John? Um, so in your first couple of examples of extending the endpoint, um, they were just functional. But I'm assuming that in practice, normally you extend the WP REST controller class. Is that usually it's all wrapped up in a class or not? It depends. So the question was that it, when I was talking about the depend, modifying endpoints, uh, default routes, he asked, uh, he said, my examples were all functional. Why not have them in a class? In that example, I actually brought them out of object class, uh, object context. Um, but you, so you sort of asked two questions. Your second part of your question was about using the WP REST controller. Uh, in many cases, when doing a custom endpoint, yes, I will extend the WP REST controller. Actually, I'll make a abstract class that extends that. And the beautiful thing about that is I'll have, in my abstract class, I'll have every single endpoint defined, returning whatever the status code is for not implemented yet. And then when I extend that class and I implement one method, the rest are there as a proper error. Um, but yeah, that is really just one function. So it can be anything. But in that, in that you're just creating a function to get data or to write data. So you can do anything. I kind of, uh, in my head, I'm thinking about a parallel to like the read API and extending widget classes, right? So yeah. At least in my practice, like I'm thinking, normally you just go to the rest controller and extend that to build your whole endpoint. So Am I yes. In there, so the, we talked about two things. We talked about modifying the responses. Uh, in that case, no. In the case of extend, creating your own, yeah, definitely a great practice. Not required, uh, but you can. So you see, it's two totally different things. So in the, the first case, all you're doing is modifying a response for a post. Yeah. And that's the meta field. You're not trying to build an entire end. Yeah. So in the first example, we're saying, OK, I have a post response. It can get me a post, get me a custom post type, and get me users, right? Awesome. But in my use case, there is uh, two other pieces of data that are necessary to me. Right. In my own special, unique way, these two pieces of data are, are part of a post. Right, because um, I'm doing some sort of custom e-commerce and I have a price and a SKU number. Those should always be part of posts. There's never a situation or a product, right? So we're just, and when I update, I want those there to be able to update. So that's where we're saying this, this existing default is perfect, except for this one little thing. It should have this for me, so I'll add it on. That's different from a custom endpoint where we're saying, okay, maybe if I make a request to here and I make a request to there, I could get most of it done, but then I still don't have any way, so you, you circle down a rabbit hole or there never was a way. And so you just say, forget it. I'm gonna do my own personal thing. Uh, in, instead, but instead of starting from scratch, adding a rewrite rule, creating your own custom handler for it, you're using the, word, the REST API infrastructure to make sure that you know the headers are right, the application content type is right, these sorts of things. Some more time, more questions? Do you have a question over here in the back? Yeah, this is a general question. Will the rest of the API make it a lot easier to work with JavaScript on your own and do that on more? Yes. And, uh, secondly, will they make it easier to work with um, apps? With apps. Based on uh, the word price, word price, price, price. Yeah. So two interrelated, very related questions here. One was, will this make it easier to work with JavaScript frameworks, MVC frameworks, like Angular, React, these sorts of things? And then, will that make it easier for us to work with apps? Yes, 100% yes. Um, but, because what is a, what do you put into Backbone? What do you put into Angular? A JSON string. So, this is going to make it very easy for you or the Angular developer that you've hired who has no idea about WordPress. You know, they know it's a thing, but they don't know WordPress development uh, to make your app, to make your, you know, your really cool web app, your mobile app. Uh, and this is how you're going to say to them, hey, I'm self-documenting, because I did my schema, REST API on my site. Your client is used to WordPress, is gonna go in and edit all their content on WordPress, and you're gonna hand them the, your Angular developer, your backbone developer, the REST API endpoints. And where this, and obviously that's not what we're talking about today, and also, like, I'm a JavaScript moron, 
eh, I do some JavaScript stuff, but I don't do, um, uh, I'm very weak when it comes to Angular and that sort of stuff. Uh, as a PHP developer and a WordPress person, I am looking at this stuff as, this is how I'm going to serve those types of projects. Where you say to me, I'm making a custom app and I'm using WordPress as my database level and as my content management. But I'm not using any post type content. There are no posts, there are no pages. It's all in a custom table. It's all, you know, e each thing that represents something to my user comes from four different post types and 17 different custom fields. So it would be insane to hit, well, that post, you know, the, uh, hit, you know custom post type here and here, just make a custom endpoint. Uh, this is gonna give you that infrastructure to do that, to satisfy those needs. Does that answer your question? Okay, well, thank you all again. Thank you.